Hi everyone, William here with Imaging Resource, and in this short video, we're going to take a quick tour of the design and features of the new Fuji X-H2. I've been shooting this camera for a few weeks now, and as part of my hands-on review, I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I like, my thoughts about the design, the ergonomics, and how it compares to the X-T4, which I've shot before, as well as some of the new features compared to the original X-H1. First and foremost, you can tell uh, just by the look of it in my hands is that it is much larger and with a more prominent grip than the X-T4. Um, designed for use with longer telephoto lenses, the X-H2 really does fit really comfortably into my hands. The, uh, the contouring is really nice. Uh, my hands are about medium size or so um, and it fits, fits really comfortably um, even without a battery grip on the bottom of the camera. Um, I shot this camera with uh, the long uh, 150 to 600 millimeter lens and um, that lens can be a little front heavy with just uh, the camera alone without the grip but the deeper hand grip really does go a long way to make the camera really comfortable and really secure in your hands. Beyond just the size of the grip of the camera, the shape and design of the X-H2 really mirrors that of the GFX 100S or GFX 50S Mark II compared to something like the X-T4. Uh, the X-T4 obviously with the uh, classic dual dial designs for shutter speed and ISO, whereas the X-H2 uh, takes after these GFX cameras um, with a more traditional uh, mode dial and a, a top uh, e-ink display. Um, it's really more, feels more like a modern, uh, more traditional mirrorless camera than say the classic Fujifilm X series that uh, we've known for years. Yeah, as you can see, compared to the uh, X-T4 right here, uh, the X-H2 has a, a classic mode dial with a locking mechanism and up to seven custom function slots, whereas the X-T4 over here has a, a shutter speed dial and ISO dial, um, and obviously uh, aperture ring on the lenses to control aperture in most cases. As I'm shooting this video, the X-T5 has since been announced, but we don't have that camera in-house to test yet. Um, I know that camera has a slightly uh, deeper grip uh, compared to the X-T4. I'm not sure exactly how that compares to the X-H2. It's not gonna have as deep of a hand grip as the X-H2 or X-H2S. So if you're a Fuji photographer shooting sports or wildlife and you often shoot with long heavy lenses, then um, something like the X-H2 or X-H2S is going to fit much more nicely in your hands and be more comfortable to shoot. Just want to talk briefly about the buttons and the control layout on the X-H2. Um, not drastically different than that of the X-T4, uh, obviously, except for the uh, top dials here. Um, but on the rear, we still have a multi-directional uh, joystick control, as well as uh, multi-directional buttons on the back, well, which was nice to see. But overall, the buttons and dials on the back of the X-H2 uh, are larger and easier to press than those of like the X-T4, for example. The buttons are more prominent on the back of the camera. They're uh, easier to press in, especially if you're like wearing gloves in colder climates. Um, just the camera is overall more easy to operate. Uh, the four-way buttons on the back of the camera are still a little small uh, and look basically the same as on the X-T4. Um, I would have liked to have them a little bit larger, um, but the fact that there's the four-way directional controls on the back right here at all um, is a great feature. Um, another change to this camera compared to uh, the X-T4 or X-T3 is that while we still have front and rear control dials, um, they no longer press in. Um, on the X-T4, you could customize the rear controls and you could push them in, or this front dial here, you could press it in and it could act as the, additional custom function buttons. So you're missing that on the X-H2 and the X-H2S. What we've been told by Fujifilm is that this was to increase durability and weather sealing, although to what extent that goes, we're not exactly sure. I would have liked to have those pressable buttons on these front and rear control dials, but um, that's a small complaint. On the top of the camera, on the uh, right side here, we obviously have an e-ink display, just like on the GFX 100S, um, showing all the important shooting information. And then we have uh, three uh, dedicated buttons here right on the top of the camera for ISO white balance and then a custom function button right here for easy access. Fujifilm has also updated the shutter release button. Uh, you can see it, it's a little bit of a flatter design. You still have the power on and off switch right there uh, next to uh, the shutter release like we did on the X-T4. 
but uh, the button feel is more solid and smooth. Um, and when you half press and click, it's much more satisfying and uh, easier to operate than on the X-T4. Another nice upgrade on the X-H2 compared to the predecessor X-H1 or the X-T4 is a new viewfinder. The screen inside the EVF here is a much higher resolution panel. It's 5.76 million dot display, um, whereas the X-H1 or the X-T4 had a 3.69 million dot um, OLED display. The X-H2 also has a higher magnification factor at up to 0.8x um, compared to 0.75 on the X-H1. Looking through the viewfinder, it's sharp, crisp. Um, the refresh rate's even faster now at 120 frames per second, or up to 120 frames per second. So it really looks great um, in all shooting conditions. I had no complaints with it whatsoever. And shooting it side by side between the X-T4, I already really liked the EVF on this camera, but um, this one is absolutely excellent and looks wonderful uh, out in the field. The rear very angle display is essentially identical to the one on the X-T4. It is uh, a more higher resolution panel compared to the X-H1 now at 1.62 million dots, whereas the X-H1 had 1.02 million. Now in terms of storage, the X-H2 here uses a dual card slot design just like the X-T4 and the X-H1. However, we've now gone from dual SD card slots to one SD and one CF Express Type B. Um, the SD is still UHS-2, so it's pretty fast, but the CF Express B has a much faster read and write performance, um, which is great for this camera in particular with a 40 megapixel sensor. Uh, and they're not backwards compatible with SD like we see with the CF Express Type A, um, which Sony has used on cameras such as the A7 Mark IV. Um, so you will have to use two different kinds of memory cards if you want uh, a backup or a carryover uh, memory card. I would personally have liked to have two card slots of the same type. Um, two CF Express Type B would be great, but like I said, these cards are quite expensive. So um, I'm glad to have the option to have this faster, higher capacity storage type in this camera. Um, I was shooting uh, some skateboarding uh, last weekend and with the 40 uh, megapixel sensor with RAW and JPEG and shooting it up to 15 frames per second. Um, in most cases, um, I really, really was filling up the memory card and with lots and lots of data. And after like two or three hours of shooting, I came back and had about nearly 200 gigabytes of photos to dump. So the faster uh, storage here uh, really makes the workflow much more easy. One last note, a small uh, detail that I really like about this camera are the new strap lugs. Um, as you can see here, we've uh, gone away from the little triangle uh, hook strap attachments uh, to just a small bar where the straps can pass through, much like on Canon DSLRs that I'm used to. Um, it's flush with the side of the camera. I, nothing's protruding into my hand when I carry it. Um, and I really just find the quieter, simpler strap mounting points on this camera to be a nice little quality of life improvement. That's pretty much all I have to talk about today with the X-H2. Um, be sure to jump over to Imaging Resource for even more thoughts uh, on the design, the ergonomics, as well as the image quality and shooting performance of this camera um, in my hands-on review. Uh, the link is in the description and thanks so much for watching.